when I was young, I thought that success was all I needed. That's what was going to bring the happiness, buying my mom a house, uh, being the fame, the accolades, having people say, yo, you are the best in the game. I thought those would be the things that would bring happiness. And then when those things came, the, the happiness wasn't there. And I, I realized why that was. There was, a, there was such an attempt to achieve these things and to keep going that you lose sight of the people and the, the blessings that you have around you. You're so focused on the next success, the next step in your career, the next check, whatever it is, and you forget the fact that you have these, these things that seem small um, if you're looking that way, but if you look this way, you realize they're the only thing that matters, and that's your mother, that's your family, that's love. What was it like growing up in Grays? Talk a bit about your family. I'm from Grays in Essex. Grays is as it sounds. I didn't like it. I didn't, I, I didn't feel like I, fit, I fitted in. And the only way that it seemed possible that I would be happy seemed to be this kind of acquisitive, individualistic narrative. Get used to hearing that word from me. So like, what I thought was, if you want to be happy, you've got to become a successful person, you've got to acquire stuff, you've got to have people adore you, you've got to become glamorous. Because I felt small, I felt alienated alone, and I felt very, very powerless in greys. Then what happened was, I then experienced the things that I was culturally indoctrinated to believe would be a kind of salvation. Fame, fortune, uh, attention, li limitless uh, fellatio if required. <laughs> And yet, salvation did not come. You know, when I went back to where I was from, when I got there, and there was a sort of a sense of despair that I wasn't really prepared for. The place I'd come from had deteriorated, it had become worse. Every shop replaced by betting shops and pound shops and talk of food banks and talk of UKIP. And I thought, oh no, there is a massive despair. The alienation that I felt on a personal level is actually a social problem. And we're culturally trying to solve it in the way that I tried to solve it as an individual, by lacquer it in glamour, by trying to acquire money, by consuming. So I thought, is there anything you can do about that, Russell, as a person who talks for a living? And then I thought, yeah, talk about that and then write a book about it, then I've done it. <laughs> Happiness. Um, it's, it's complex, right? And it's deceiving mm. at times, you know, because people think the two equate. Yes. You know, to each other, and they don't, right? That's, you have a lot of money. It's up, yeah. And, and, and I have a lot of happiness, but that doesn't mean that the two equate to each other. Has your happiness risen at the same amount as your bank account? No. That's the thing. They don't. They don't. They don't equate, or they're they not tied in any way. They're not tied or, in, to each other. Wow. I mean, it allows you freedom, and it allows you to go places where you can smile and look at the sunset and things like that. That's what you choose to do, and you enjoy to do. Right. But there are a lot of people with tons of money who are, who are unhappy because they're. Is either they become a prisoner of their money right. or they become so consumed with getting money that they don't allow time for happiness. Right. Life is about balance, right? You have to have some type of balance. You have like, time for work and it's time for play.